uh, uh, you know, it was life. It's plural life. You know, I mean, my God, it, the life of God, God had taken a, a large portion of his own soul, his own life, and he breathed it into Adam to breathe life into him. And so when, when God took Eve from him, he was able to take from Adam a portion of that life that he breathed into Adam's nostrils, that spirit, the, the, the very thing that gave him life, the spirit of God that he breathed into him, and he was able to put it into Eve and didn't have to breathe a second time because he'd already breathed it the first time. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You know, we see this. It kind of brings to my mind how Jesus, you know, when they, 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 say they, came to, they came to bind him up and to take him to have him crucified. And when he spoke, he breathed, you know, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different time. When he, when, he, when he said to his apostles, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. He's showing you right there that he was Hashem to give the life. To Adam. Have you ever notice Eve is not called Eve until after the fall? Chava. The Yod is not in the name. Chava. The life of God is not there. Why? Because she will bring forth life. She will bring forth flesh life in order to keep the promise of God. But now, the, the, see what it is? It's broken. It's broken. The Spirit of God got removed from the fall. And now they can bring forth children, but there's no life there. The life of Hashem, the life of God, is not there. Jesus, when he spoke to his disciples, was showing in a type that he was, it was, he was the one that was there when he breathed that breath of life into Ish, into Adam. He was the one that was breathing that life into him. When he breathed on his disciples and said, Receive you the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He was giving a foreshadow what they were fixing to have. Speaking that word before it even manifested. Because Adam had forfeited it. So the gula, the redemption, is to get that spirit of God back inside of us, brethren. We need to get the spirit of God back inside of our beings. To get the Holy Spirit back in there. So the son of David, when we look at the genealogy of Jesus, yes, it has to come through Mary. Why? Because God said the woman seed shall bruise thy head. The serpent, seeds, uh, the, the serpent seed would bruise his heel, but the woman would bruise his head. Her seed, the woman's seed. Showing that the genealogy would come through the woman, not through the man. And yes, it can still be the son of David because it's a grandson. I mean, we, we look at that with, with Jethro. I mean, Jethro, we, we know that he's the father-in-law of Abraham, but when, when we first hear about uh, Raoel, you know, uh, his, you know, I know there's a dispute over that amongst our own people. You know, is it, is it just different names for Jethro or is it Jethro's father? But nonetheless, uh, different debates on that, but it's still called a father, even though it's a grandfather. The same thing. I mean, you would understand. I know my brothers understand that. That's not an issue there. But the genealogy had to come through Mary. Because God had already said to Eve, thy seed should bruise the serpent's head. Now, what, how, does that, how does it work in that case there? See, God had already breathed the breath of life into, into Adam. And then Adam and Eve, and then God took and put Adam into a deep sleep, opened his side, took out his wife, and brought that spirit of God from, that was in him, a portion of that, and put it into Eve. But at the fall, they lost the spirit. Now, God cannot just recreate another Adam outside of a kinsman. We know the story of Ruth. You have to have a kinsman redeemer according to the law of Moses. We have to have a kinsman redeemer. But according to Yeshayahu in, in, in chapters 42 and 43, he, Isaiah speaks of God, speaking of Moshiach, that he would create him and he would form him. And God even says, I am he. I'll, I'll read that to you in just a moment. But let me, let me just, so you understand though, the woman's seed, basically, what God is trying to say here to show you the genealogy, God had to find a woman that would believe. 
When God came to, to, in, in the form of a human being, the three angels that came down, the three strangers, as we uh, say, uh, the Melchim that came before Abraham and the three that were there, one of them spoke to Abraham and knew the secrets of the heart, of Sarah, knew that she laughed within her heart, Abraham had laughed the day before, saying, how can these things be? God was looking for a, a womb that would have faith. And, and Abraham would be a father of many nations. Even God knew that, 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 that it was not the time that, that faith would, would be there, but he had to also raise up a nation that would be a priestly nation to offer the sacrifice, to be able to release the Spirit. So, Sarah, it, it, I hate to say it this way, Sarah had to laugh. She had to doubt. Because that was not the hour that God had intended for Mashiach to come. God was raising up a royal priesthood through Sarah. Had Sarah believed Mashiach would have come through Sarah, had she not doubted, had she not laughed, Mashiach could have been brought right into that womb. That's the seed of the woman that he's looking for. He's looking for a woman that would take God at his word, that would not add one milah, not one milah, or take away one milah from the, what was written in the word of God. And when Mary come along, that's what she did. The angel Gabriel comes to her, Gabriel, and he says to her, you shall have a son. How can these things be? She didn't doubt it. She just said, how could it be? He said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. And she said, be it unto me according to thy word. She believed the message and therefore, because of faith, God was able to create in her that life, that seed. The seed was her. If she, God was looking for a woman that would believe it. And we sit there and we try to debate and argue over Alma. Isaiah did not, Isaiah, the whole purpose for Alma was that the specialty of the prophecy is that there would be a special young lady, a special young lady who would be different than anything else. We just had no idea that it would be a virgin. But if we really were to search the scriptures, if we look at all the prophecies, it's obvious it has to be a virgin because if Isaiah says, let me take you to it real quick, if Isaiah says in Isaiah 43, um, I'm used to the Tanakh, I'm reading here for the sake of English from the Christian Bible here. Let me just find it. Ooh, where's that? The book's backward. <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know, the Christian Bible lays out the canons of the, uh, the Jewish Bible a little different. And so, kind of, if, if you're used to more of the Tanakh, we separate the books a little differently, so it makes it a little bit, a little, little bit more challenging to find. Um, here it is, Isaiah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, where is it? I think it's in chapter 43. I, uh, let's see, I think this is it here. Yes, in I think chapter 43, verse 10. You are my witnesses, says uh, Hashem, and my servant whom I have chosen. And the servant he has chosen, he's speaking of Mashiach. Uh, you might argue different with that on me, but, but it's Mashiach. There's no way around it. Uh, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Now this is Hashem claiming to be the servant. Okay? Now... Before me there was no God form. And this is why Jews don't believe in... I um, understand that in Trinitar Trinitarianism there's different views on that. But we believe in one God. Jews believe in one God. I know there are a lot of Trinitarians that believe in one God as well. Uh, but they just have a kind of a... For Jews it's an unusual way for us to hear it. We believe that God is God. There is no God beside me. And this is what he says here in, in Yeshayahu, uh, in Isaiah... I said, before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Uh, I, even I, am Hashem, uh, the divine name here, and beside me there is no Savior. I have de declared and saved, and I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my servants, says the Lord, that I am God. And indeed, before the day was, I am He, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand, and I work in who... Let me back up some... 
Let me, let me point out one thing, though, before I back up, because what I'm going to show my Jewish brethren is where God speaks of creating him and forming him, which is going to be in the womb. But when God is showing you here that he is that one that is God, and, and he's speaking of Messiah, because he says clearly here, uh, you're my witnesses, says the Lord, uh, my servant whom I've chosen, uh, it's not speaking of Israel. Don't get that mixed up. It's not speaking of Israel. Um, but he says that I am he. Let me, let me, let me, let me back up though. Uh, bring out the blind people who have eyes. Verse, uh, uh, this is cha uh, four, chapter 43, verse 8. Bring out the uh, have eyes and the deaf have ears, that all the nations be gathered together and the people be assembled whom among them can declare this. And show, oh, okay, no, let me back up even further. Right in here somewhere. I don't want to take too much time because I know we're trying to video this here. But let me let me just say this here. What you have to understand, and, and I'll find this uh, for, for the sake there uh, so, so that you would know uh, where he says it's because it's where God is speaking of, and it may be in chapter 42. Uh, Hashem is saying that he formed him, he created him, and he's speaking of the Messiah. Now what's interesting then, God says that he is. He is, he is the one that's being created in the womb. And so it's, that's why I find it ironic when Jesus breathes upon his apostles and says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. He's showing that he was God back in the time when Adam was breathed on and received for his soul, Chaim. He became a living soul, um, as the Bible says there. Uh, oh, wow, my brethren. This is interesting. Let's, let's keep following this. So. so in this case here, Mary has to bring forth this child. And it has to come, the genealogy then has to come through, through the woman. Why? Now, Mary is the one that will believe, so therefore God can begin to form this child in a womb. Uh, this is the special child that Isaiah speaks of in chapter 7. Uh, the Alma, uh, the, the young woman. Uh, but in this case here, we know she's a virgin because there has to be a reason for her to be special in the first place. But at any rate, though, as we come down, we find out, though, that when Jesus is born... The whole purpose is that God creates him this way is God has to reform and recreate a second Adam. If the Holy Spirit was lost with Adam and Eve, this is the whole purpose for redemption. We're, we're trying to get back where we were before. Redemption is not just to bring us back to the homeland. Redemption is to take us back to what happened in the Garden of Eden where we lost in the Garden of Eden. We have to recognize that. I mean, look at Rabbi R. Rabbi Orr, who happened to um, uh, teach that the, that, the, that the human body was laid out like, like the temple, uh, the temple of the Lord, and that our, the human heart is basically in the same place where the Holy of Holies stood in the temple, if you lay it out in, in, like a, in a body form. And that, you know, the Kedusha, of course, we know, the, 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 you know, we, we want to, 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 to get Kedusha, and of course, as, as Rabbi Winston points out, you know, we want to be as close to Kedusha as we possibly can. But really and truly, what God is wanting is to put the Ruach uh, Chaim, the, the, the Spirit of Life, the life, the Spirit of Life, the Spirit of God inside of our heart. And we're to prepare our heart for the Spirit of God. This is what Moshiach ben David was to do. This is why Hashem had to recreate the human body all over again. He created this body in order to put the Spirit of God back inside of a human body, like it was with Adam. This is why when Jesus was on the earth, He had the Spirit of God living inside of Him. He could do that. You know, it should have been evident to us when he knew the secrets of the heart that it was the same one that told Abraham that Sarah laughed within her heart. That's why the woman at the well could say to him, she says to him when Jesus makes the comment, you've had five husbands and the one you're living with now is not yours. She said, we know when Messiah comes, this is the things he'd tell us. In other words, he would know the secrets of the heart. She knew it from Abraham and from Elohim being in front of Abraham. Hashem spoke to that Abraham in that place. 
She knew that. And here we are, we're, we're seeing this, and then Jesus says to her, if you knew it was that spoke to you, you'd ask me for a drink. Because at first he's asking for her a drink from the well, and she says, you know, we have no dealings with you, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan, because there was no house of Israel there. And the Samaritans have been the outcasts, because women that have been impregnated by the Syrian soldiers that, that took over that area. But she was looking for Mashiach as well. Which is a good point, though. You know, she was looking for Mashiach. Why? Because the seed comes through the woman. So therefore, she has a right to be a son of David or, or, or child, a child of Israel as well. Through the law of Moses. You can't cast her out. We, how, how could we even cast her out in the first place? Why could the Jews of that day cast her out in the first place? Now, well, we can go into a, a lot of different areas on this subject here, but I need to really get to this point though, my brother. And there, there are, I have produced videos that you could watch on this that are shorter on, on as far as the redemption process. But she asked for, for the drink, or he asked for the drink of water. She says that she can't do it. Jesus says, if you knew it was, it was speaking to you, you'd ask me for a drink. And I would give you living waters that you don't have to come here. When he said he would give her living waters, we know from the Torah that Hashem is called the living water. When Moshe, Moses struck the rock. First time he spoke to the rock. Hashem, excuse me, the first time, I'm sorry. First time he, he smote the rock. And that's what God said for him to do. Go out there, take the elders of Israel and smite the rock. That was only for showing that, that, the, that the elders of Israel, the high priest of Israel would go and they would smite Christ. Had to be. That's why the rock was split. The rock was split because Adam was split in order to bring forth a wife in order for the life of God that was in him to come out and to come upon his wife in order to bring forth a nation of people filled with the Spirit of God. And when the children of Israel were dying in the wilderness, the only way to bring forth life, and this was only life in the natural, but it was going to type what Hashem would do in the spiritual, God had Moses take the elders of Israel and smite the rock. And when the rock was smitten, it was smitten open. The life-giving water came out of that rock. And do you remember, my brethren, the whole argument to begin with was whether or not Hashem was even among them. Was God really among them? That was the argument. That was the argument when Yeshua, Jesus, was on earth. Was God really among them? And for my Christian brethren, let me just say something to you. I know you think of, when you read the, 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 the Christian Bible in English, you're not thinking of it the way Jews would from Hebrew. But when John says in there, except that you believe that Jesus, uh, you know, that Jesus came in the flesh, you're an antichrist. If you don't believe, uh, I'm not quoting it exactly right, but he speaks of that there and he says that unless you believe that Jesus came in the flesh, uh, if you believe that, you're of, of God. If you don't believe it, you're an antichrist. Do you really realize what he's saying? What John is saying? You have to remember, when John said that to the Jews, he said it in Hebrew. Except that you believe Yeshua, except that you believe that Jehovah's salvation has come in flesh, you are an antichrist spirit. And that's what it was. And that's what he recognized is that, 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 that the Spirit of God, Hashem, had come in a human body. And that was the salvation. He is showing to his people that redemption had come in a human body. And it had to come in a human body because Adam had forfeited this. Adam and Eve, the only really the only fault with Eve was doubting the Word of God. That's why the seed comes through the woman in the first place. Because the only thing that God has to do is find a woman that would believe Him and not doubt His Word. And when He could find that, a child could be formed in that womb. He, that, that faith and belief in God without doubting will allow the Word to take root in a human body. That's why He had to have Alma, a young woman, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. Alma. And... <laughs> And God then forms this child in the womb. He's forming a body for himself. What difference is God than that than when God made a body and he got inside that human body and walked up to Abraham? What's the difference? The only difference is, is that Moses had already shown by striking of the rock 
that the Messiah would be smitten. David in the Psalm says in Psalm 22 to Halim that my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? David was not, his hands were not pierced. His feet were not pierced. They didn't wag his head, their wag his head at him. You know, David was a type of Mashiach. That is true. But never was his hands and feet pierced. They were never thrust through. But the Messiah had to be thrust through. And why? Why did, you know, not only did his hands and feet have to be pierced, which we see the prophecy in Zechariah, when we look upon him who is wounded, we'll say, where did you get these wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. And according to that, we're separate according to our family names, the house of Nathan, or Nathan apart, the house of David apart, not tribal order. It's never been fulfilled. It has to be fulfilled in this day. And Moshiach had to have been wounded. And we have to say, where did you get these wounds? In the house of my friends. My brother, we got to wake up when, when Jesus when he was taken out there and brought out on Calvary and he was, we, we, we rejected him and we said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Why did we say his blood be upon us and our children? That actually was the only protection that our people had for the next 2,000 years. We were applying the very blood of the sacrifice upon ourselves by doing that. And so therefore, God granted us mercy. And you might think that's blasphemy. But I tell you what, as, as the brother that sent me the videos of Rabbi uh, Mizrahi said, if you believe the New Testament, and if it's not right, a curse will come upon you. I don't have a curse on me whatsoever. And I don't fault my Jewish brethren that don't see it. But I say that the hour is now and the time is now to believe it. We have to wake up to the truth of the facts of what God has promised. All these types and shadows that lay in there for us. When Jesus was taken out and they put him and they hung him on the cross, the Romans did it. What did, what did, what did Joseph's brothers do? Judah passed him off to, to the Ishmaelites. That's why we passed him off. It was, everything has been foreshadowing what's going to happen. Why do you think with the story of Joseph they find the cup in Benjamin's back? Benjamin was never there. Benjamin was not guilty in selling out their brother Joseph. Neither are the Jews today guilty of selling out Jesus 2,000 years ago. But we are found with the cup in our bag. Why? Because he was rejected at the communion table. But the cup is in our hand. What will we do with it? Will we turn it down? Even when they get back to the inn, and the first time the Joseph's brother, and they're going back, they're going back home, he opens up the bag to give his mule some, some corn and, 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 and the Malone, the Babylon. It says he is at the end, Babylon, a hotel. And he found his money in his bag. Why the motel? Because Jesus was rejected first when he was in the womb of his mother at the hotel. And we're still doing it to this day. We're rejecting him when he was in the womb. We are denying the fact of a virgin birth. We're doing the same thing that they did there. But you know what's funny? It's in this hour that we're supposed to start waking up. It's in this hour that we're supposed to start asking questions. What's happening? Why is all this happening? Why are we in the homeland? We were scattered for sin. What was our sin? We need to wake up and find out what our sin was. And I want to say to you, my brethren, also, that when Jesus was taken out, we sold him out to the Ishmaelites. They sold him out to the Romans. He's put up on the cross. You know, the Rabbi Yosef, and not just him, many of the rabbis say, and even back then they said, he saved others, why couldn't he save himself? Had he saved himself, there'd be no redemption. Because inside of that man was Chaim, the Chaim of God himself was inside of him, what was forfeited by Adam and Eve. Now this man Jesus was carrying it inside of him. And as Adam was torn in half in order to bring out that life to put into his wife to bring forth children that should have been filled with the Spirit of Almighty God, that had been lost and forfeited at the Garden of Eden. They could bring forth children, but it would be in sorrow and pain because why? There was no Holy Spirit, no life. That's why that day she did and he did. That day they died. They didn't die a thousand years later. They died when they lost the Spirit of Almighty God. That's when they died. Spiritually speaking, they were dead. Not 
literally because God had planned the plan of redemption. In fact, God sacrificed the first lamb and put it upon them, showing that he would shed the blood for the innocent. And here we are, we're coming down. And Jesus now, he's on Calvary. He's been torn as Adam was torn open to bring out his bride. Jesus was torn open. And then the Roman soldier stabbed him in the side. And from his side came, comes water and blood separated, showing that water showed that he was the very waters of life would come from his side. In his heart was the spirit of Almighty God. From the Holy of Holies. Why do you think the, the veil of the temple was rent in twain? It was rent in, in two, showing that God had parted. He had ripped apart. Moshiach had been ripped apart for us, for our own sake, so that the life of Almighty God that was in Him could now come back upon us so that we could be redeemed back to God. That is what this was all about. And how, how we, we need to recognize what Moshiach was for, all the types and the shadows. This is why Joseph was only, Joseph, his natural father on the earth, it was only symbolic. It was symbolic. You know what? You know, Matthew brings out that genealogy for the sake of the Jewish people because we're stuck in that tradition. We forget the law of Moses that allows it to come through the mother. We forget in Genesis that God said the seed would come through the woman. We're so caught up with the little petty things, we've got to quit looking at the petty things and believe Hashem that He sent His redemption. This is what this is all here for. And now we have it. This is why Jesus said, you know, you must be born again. That's what this new birth is all about. The new birth is to, is to get the life of God in us. That's what will redeem us. No wonder why Job said that in the last days, mine eyes, these eyes that were in his own sock of his own head, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. He lives. He was living then. He knew his Redeemer was living already. And at the last day, I shall see, my eyes shall see him for myself. Why? Because he knew that the Redeemer would bring back up that body that went into the ground and recreate the same eyes to be able to see his Redeemer. My brethren, it is so late of an hour. The Christian people, uh, let me say this to the Christian people as well as watching this video. There are some that are getting ready to leave in what is called a rapture. But my brethren, that's going to be very few. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people that call themselves Christians that are going to be disappointed that are not going to make it. Why? Because the so-called Christians of today, you're doing the same thing that we did in the days of Israel's history in our, in our past. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof. And you'll be left behind. And then you'll wonder what happened. You're fixing to see a revival amongst the Jewish people. And you know, Rabbi, Rabbi Mizrahi, I, I really appreciate one comment you said when, when Elijah, if a man comes among us and said, I am Elijah, you said, we're not going to say, well, you're Elijah because you can prove it by the Bible. No, we will say, you claim to be Eliyahu, Eliyahu Navi. Prove it. You're right. Because we know Eliyahu Hanavi is to come. It's when our door is open on, uh, on uh, every center. It's for Eliyahu. But Moshe will come with him. And when they come, we'll definitely believe them. That's what it's going to take. And uh, the Christian Bible writes of them, calls them witnesses. Now, I know that some, some of my rabbinical brethren believe that Moshe will return and he will be Moshiach. Well, there again, that's another doctrine among our people. Do all Jews believe that? No. Uh, Rashi, though, points out in, 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 uh, in, in the Midrash that when, 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 when Moshe writes in uh, Shemot, uh, or the Exodus, or we call it the names, um, in Exodus chapter 14, he says, Asher al Adonai, I will sing unto the Lord that you've gotten victory over the haughty one and over his rider. That it's a future tense. We know that uh, from this that, that Moses should return and Moses will return 
And what's funny is John, he's a Jewish brother. We might as well face the fact he's a Jewish brother. John recognized the same thing. John recognized the same. John says right there that uh, when he's speaking of Moshiach, that, uh, or excuse me, I'm sorry. When, when, when John says in, uh, I think it's in, oh, I'm sorry, and I, I misquoted this chapter too on Exodus, Shemot. It's 15. 15 is where we have Ashur al Adonai. I will sing unto the Lord. And, and, and Rashi pointed out that it would show that undoubtedly, he's quoting from the blessed rabbis that wrote from the Tanakh, and, 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 excuse me, from the, from the Talmud, that Moses undoubtedly be back uh, in his belief in the messian, um, messianic age um, because of the song being in the future and singing the song of redemption. Well, John, who wrote in Revelation 15, speaks of uh, this group that comes out on the sea of glass mingled with fire, an exodus, as it would, I believe it's an exodus over the judgment of God, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came through the fiery furnace. These will come through the fiery, fiery furnace that's going to happen, uh, as we call uh, Gog and Magog, or Amargedon, ha ha Um that's to come on here. We're going to come out victorious. We're going to come through this judgment that's fixing to strike this earth. But John brought out an interesting point. He said that they sing the song of Moses. Hmm, Moses must have come back. What do you know? They sing the song of Moses, the song of redemption. Uh, but he also added in the song of the Lamb. They recognized who, uh, who is the sacrifice. I hope this has helped. And Rabbi uh, Yosef, I love you as a brother. And I don't mean it to be different. But I am in a search for truth. I want to know what truth is. I know there's many, many more things that you brought out uh, as to be contradictions in the Christian Bible. Uh, I will gladly work on each one of these for you. I know the answers to nearly every single one that you brought out. And there again, if we don't take it from a critical standpoint, if we look at it from a genuine heart, and, and you know, take the time, you know, let's pray, let's ask Hashem. If this is really true, if, if Yeshua, if Jesus is really the Yeshua of God, if he is Moshiach, it's not a second God, we know that. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, we know, we know it. But if he's really Moshiach ben David, can we not pray and really sincerely from God ask him, will not the God of heaven answer us? God is, he's not going to just leave us in blindness. But you know, the thing is, is these prophecies, we've been scattered all this year, uh, you know. I know what it's like. I, my mother's family, the Jews, they were murdered in the Holocaust. We came to the United States illegally uh, to escape the Holocaust. So, I, I you know, I'm, I'm Jewish, as, just as Jewish as you can get as well. But I believe that Jesus is Moshiach ben David. And the thing is, is you say he's supposed to be, pre, be pre, uh, uh, he's supposed to come and being peace, yes, it's broken into two parts. And we can see that by Isaiah, Yeshayahu, when he speaks of this in 61. Uh, and we see that the second half, and, and we know that that has to be true because it even speaks of Israel being married. So Jesus comes and he says to marry a bride, Israel is part of that bride. So anyway, my brethren, I love you. My rabbinical brethren, with love and Kindness and mutual respect. I gladly talk with any of you that want to talk and uh, and sit down and speak together as brothers. Uh, if you wanted to have a, a genuine uh, debate or discussion over, over the arguments that are there, I would gladly do this with you as well. Uh, I would say, though, let's take the time to know what we're going to talk about beforehand so I can as well pray, prayerfully seek uh, Hashem to know the answer to these questions that may be there as well. But anyway... My brother uh, Gino, who has uh, sent the video of uh, Rabbi Yosef to me, God bless you, my brother. Uh, you may not believe even after listening to this video. I know you'll listen to it, though. But I hope that if you take the time, it is very lengthy. It's an hour and 23 minutes already into it. I'll have to break it up into probably three parts. But I hope you take the time to listen to all three parts, my brother. God richly bless you. I know he will bless the Jewish people. He's promised to. And our redemption draweth nigh. Shalom lahi to'ot.